My name is Teddy Jacobson of Actions by T. I am a pistol smith in Sugarland, Texas. I am a trigger specialist and work on over 100 different models of handgun actions. This tape will explain which are the best small handguns for street carry. I will also tell you which holsters I have found to be the finest available. And I will discuss what ammunition, in my opinion, is the best for protection of life and property. Thousands of my pistols I have worked on are carried on a daily basis that protect life and property throughout the United States. Caliber is not as important as bullet placement and the type of projectile you select. I will discuss this in detail. I'm going to work off a checklist and first I'm going to talk to you about guns. And I want to discuss one of the finest guns for the money in this world, which is the Russian Makarov. The Russian Makarov is made in different countries of origin. It's a very inexpensive semi-automatic pistol. In some ways, people have made the wrong assumption in saying they copied the Walther, the Walther PPK or PPKS. The only similarity between the Russian Makarov and the Walther, this is a PPKS, is the takedown. There is no other similarity. And um, the Russians needed a gun that was simple to manufacture. They needed a uh, gun that uh, the average soldier could uh, take apart r rather quickly. And they needed one with moderate power. It's chambered in the 9 by 18 Russian caliber. That's this here. 9 by 18 Russian caliber. I have them side by side so you can see how the trigger bar lowers in the front on both of them. That is how you take them apart for field stripping. This pistol only consists of about 30 parts, which include the magazine, the magazine spring, and the follower. And uh, it's a very simple gun. And it's very, very reliable and very accurate. All guns with fixed barrels tend to be more accurate. The 9 by 18 is slightly more powerful than a 380. Not quite as powerful as a 9 millimeter Luga. Now I'm going to explain that to you very, very uh, easily. I made this little drawing of a 380 case. This is just the empty case. This is the 9 millimeter case. Oh, the, this is the Makarov case, and here's the 9 millimeter Luga case. Let's move this out of the way. So we have the 380 ACP, which means automatic cold pistol, 9 millimeter Makarov, and 9 millimeter Luger. Well, for instance, let's start with the Makarov. They say it's 9 by 18. Well, the measurement of the case is 9.91 millimeter. The length of the case is 18.11 millimeter. So that's how they arrive at 9 by 18. If you were to look at the, the 380, it's 9.47 at the mouth, the width of the case, 9.47 millimeter, and the length of the case is 17.27 millimeter. But they never refer to this in metric. It's referred to also as uh, 9 millimeter Kurtz in Europe. But in this country, it's 380 ACP. Now, looking down at the Luger, let me move this over so you can see it. At the Luger case, we're talking the width of the case is 9.65. 
but the length of the case is 19.15, 19.15 millimeter. So this is basically a 9 by 19. A lot of people refer to it as a 9 by 19. But now, here's the key. The pressure, uh, the pressure curves on them. This goes up to 21,500. That's the uh, maximum pressure uh, as per SAMI specs. This one is 24,100 PSI. So the, the 380 being 21,500, and this one, the Makarov is slightly more powerful at 24,100. Now we jump up to the, the 9 millimeter Luger, which is a 9 by 19, and you see it's 35,000 PSI. So the Luger is definitely more powerful. You couldn't fire this Luger unless you had a locked breech type weapon. But in a, uh, a this, the, the 380 and the, and the 9 millimeter Makarov, they operate as just with a slide, a blowback type system. It's just a, a direct blowback type system. There is no lock slide like the other, like the other guns of the 9 millimeter Luger. Now I wanted to show you how easily these guns come apart. For instance, once this is opened like this, the trigger guard, you would just pull back on it and lift it up. That's how easily it comes, uh, it comes apart for field stripping. I just dropped the, the uh, magazine so it'll be easier for me to put it back together. Now when you talk about the Walther, the reason why these people get confused and think it's the same, because it comes back, comes over the same way. It disassembles the same way. But outside of that, there's no similarity. The uh, reliability of the Makarov exceeds the reliability of the Walthers. The Walthers are a good gun. The German models, the older German ones, had less feeding problems. Uh, we're talking about this gun right here. The, this is an American-made Walther. It's made in uh, Alabama. And uh, it, it's machined fairly well, but it's prone to jam because if you limp wrist it, it will jam. And as you lower your hand on the frame, you have a jam in the making. So that's, it's a real major problem. Um, they're heavy. So carrying around a gun like this, once you work the, the, through the jamming problems of it, can be quite reliable, but it's still a pretty stout gun. It's all stainless steel. And so I'm going to leave this up for a few minutes so you can see the cartridges. But the Makarov is a super reliable gun. There's only about 30 parts, like I said. This happens to be Russian. A gun like this, uh, brand new in a box, is about $130. Now, of course, this one had some additional work, and uh, you just can't hardly beat it. Uh, it doesn't get much better than this in that kind of price range. There's no way. This is far better, in, in my opinion, than any Walther PPK or PPKS. So uh, I'm going to put this back up here now. We'll get to this. I'm going to put the Makarov and Walther aside. And we're going to talk about the little car here. The little car, a lot of people are buying these little cars. Um, they're double action only. One of the drawbacks is once you pull the trigger, you can't pull it a second time. So if your bullet doesn't fire, you got to rack the slide again. Well, you can't pull the trigger a second time. So if you get a primer that doesn't go off, it's not like a revolver where you just pull the trigger again. It just doesn't go off. Uh, they have a slow trigger return. You can see that the trigger never goes fully forward on these little cars. 
Uh, I've owned a number of them. I would not buy another one, although a lot of people do like them. And, um,